Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, another meatloaf episode, a little mix here. Um, this particular episode is going to turn into basically a uh, an epic tool um, acquisition uh, uh, episode. So uh, a couple things happened uh, uh, this last week. Um, I got a couple of packages from uh, from some viewers with some interesting stuff in it. We're going to take a look at that. And uh, I'm wearing a, a, a t-shirt here that uh, uh, Stan uh, from Shade On, Shaden uh, HKW, he's got a YouTube channel, check him out. Um, anyway, you see the shirt's pretty dirty uh, and there's a reason. Um, Friday evening I, uh, I went by a uh, um, kind of a, you know, plain vanilla looking uh, uh, Craigslist ad for some vintage tools and uh, went by there, made an appointment, went and looked at it and it turned into a uh, kind of a uh, epic find. Uh, let's just leave it at that. And um, it's actually probably going to take a couple of episodes to go through all this stuff. That's uh, what, kind of, what kind of thing we're talking about here. Um, anyway, uh, uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, you know, you only get a couple of these uh, kind of things in your life. And uh, I've been fortunate to have been in on a couple of them. And, uh, and this, is another, this is another good one. And also, I just wanted to, um, you know, it's not all about tool gloating. Um, I want to thank all the viewers out there because, um, you know, the, the YouTube bucks that come in, okay, it's not a lot of money, but it's some money and you just kind of get stuffed away. And uh, that money is the kind of uh, mad money that you can just spend on something like this when the, the opportunity comes along and you don't feel uh, like you're cutting into the house money, so to speak. Um, anyway, so you guys are, are partly responsible and uh, for uh, for providing this opportunity so you guys get to get to see some of the stuff and uh, hopefully enjoy some of the uh, uh, the tools and the and the find okay so uh, I'm gonna take a little break here and uh, wash up a little bit and then uh, we're gonna do some uh, we're gonna do some uh, tool reviews and a couple other things in here too so stay tuned okay we'll be right back Okay, so the first thing I want to I want to talk about is um, a couple of guys actually asked some really good questions. Uh, we were talking about these uh, these S hooks here, and uh, this pair there, um, and then I forgot where I put the other ones. Anyway, they're around here somewhere, and um, you know they're kind of asking just how strong are these things? You know, what would you what would you trust these to? That kind of stuff. So what I thought we'd do is we'd just do, uh, we're going to do a little load test with these guys and see how that works out. Okay. Now these are these uh, 3 ace uh, coal rolled um, uh, steel cold bent um, S hooks and I showed this in another video. Um, I think it was a uh, weeknight quickie. Um, so we're going we're gonna to load test this and what we're going to load test it with is with this table here. And I've got a sling around it here. Okay, and uh, we're going to try picking this table up and see how that goes. Now, I also get to show another tool here, and, and I'll zoom in a little closer on this also. Um, this is a, this is a uh, device that I made, um, actually it's got a date on it when I calibrated it. Uh, 1992 I made this in, and uh, what this is, um, is this is a, what's called a ring dynamometer, and uh, you can actually weigh things with this. And um, the, if I can screw it together here, and uh, and I'll zoom in so you guys can see this thing closely here. So the way this works is, um, you know, you pull on this thing, and what happens is, is this ring distorts under load, and uh, we measure that distortion with a dial indicator. And then if you calibrate this, it's fairly linear, so uh, you can actually get. Uh, um, some good readings with this. This is actually a fairly common technology, so it's nothing. I didn't invent it. It's just uh, I was too cheap to buy one, so uh, I made one. Okay, and um, and this thing has seen uh, about six six thousand pounds. Uh, this particular one here. We were doing some testing on a uh, on a device that a friend and I were working on. Uh, we were doing some. Uh, um, I don't know, product evaluation, I guess you'd call it. Uh, 
Anyway, so we're going to use this, and uh, like I said, I'm going to zoom in on that, and we can actually measure the how much this table weighs uh, using this here. Okay. So let me get you in closer, and you guys can see this thing, and uh, or maybe I'll show it afterwards. We'll do this left. Uh, we'll do this left, and I'll show the thing. Uh, we'll show the thing afterwards. So. Okay. So what we're going to do. Uh, uh, we're going to double these up like that. So we're going to do it with two to start with, and if that goes good, then we'll uh, we'll try it with one um, and see how it goes. Nice to piece to settle. Oop. Get them side by side there. All right. So the sling's starting to take up here. I'm going to calibrate this. And all I'm doing is just rotating the and zeroing the dial is all I'm doing. Okay. And uh, the, the divisions on this, uh, each uh, um, thousandth of an inch of distortion on this is about 100 pounds. Okay. So 10 thousandths, 10 thousandths. Uh, Deflection here is a thousand pounds, and like I said, we calibrated this with a five thousand pound load, and um, um, and it's seen higher than that actually. Okay, so but what we what we care about is uh, we care about the hooks here. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this thing a little. Oops, I always forget which way this can go. Let's give this a little pluck here, and hopefully you can you can see all this. And I'm watching the hooks here. Make sure everything's cool. Okay, table's coming up here. Okay, so table's off the ground. It's showing a thousand pounds on it. Okay, and it's on it's on two hooks. Okay, just you know, so five hundred pounds a piece looks okay. All right. Okay, now I gotta I gotta be a little careful. I want to keep my eye on the hook here. Okay, the, I can see that the hook is starting to open up. Okay. Yeah, it's start, starting to open up, and it's showing 700 pounds on the on the hook. So. Um, you know, with a safety factor. So let's say uh, let's say these are good for 350 pounds. We'll just cut that in half, and uh, you know, kind of safe working load, 350 pounds a piece, something like that. Back there. Okay. So it's you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll try to bring you guys in closer, and maybe you can see that distortion on the hook, and uh, uh, we'll try that. Okay. Got you in nice and close here. Let's, uh, let's make sure that's not coming out of the frame there. Okay, I think it's okay. I'm going to keep my eye on it. Okay, you see that? It's starting to, starting to straighten that thing out there. And, oh, it's actually at 800 pounds right now. So, it's at 800 pounds of force. And, and once again, I'll bring you around and uh, I'll show you the, uh, the dynamometer. Okay, so you can see here, we're sitting at, uh, there's 10 thousandths there, we're sitting at uh, 8 thousandths distortion, or 8 thousandths, uh, you know, elongation of this ring here. So that's 800 pounds. So I'm going to lower that down. And, I don't, you know, sometimes it's hard to shoot these, uh, these indicators. Uh, the glare on the indicators. Okay, so we're going to say safe working load for uh, a small radius hook like this is uh, probably 300, 350 pounds, something like that. Okay, hope you like that. And uh, this is my uh, my dynamometer here. I get to show that thing too. So, okay, boys, um, we got us uh, a major tool review here. 
Um, this, this little group here comes from um, uh, Stan Zinkowski, and uh, he's a YouTuber, and uh, his channel is uh, Shaden uh, HKW. And if you haven't checked out Stan's channel, you should. Uh, he just got a surface grinder, so he's playing around with a surface grinder. He's building a belt sander. He's doing all kinds of cool stuff. And he's done some, uh, some really neat stuff with uh, variable frequency drives. Uh, he refitted a, uh, um, a, uh, a drill press uh, so you can drill and tap with it. Uh, pretty clever stuff. Anyway, uh, he sent me a little care package with some, uh, some neat stuff in it. Um, you saw the t-shirt already, uh, <laughs> my dirty t-shirt that I was using. Uh, but he also sent me these things, which are really kind of special and nice. Uh, in particular, these little uh, these little squares that he's made. Um, so what he's what Stan has done is he's he's created uh, something that's kind of like a speed square for a carpenter, but uh, for metal workers. And you know they're 90 degrees, 45 degrees, right? Um, but what's clever about them is they have these little lips on them here. Uh, so it's got a little edge on one of the 90 degree sides and then one of the hypotenuse sides here. So what that means is now you can you can hook them like that, now you got a 45 or you can hook them like that, and now you got a 90, right? And um, so I see lots of uses for these around the, uh, around the shop and uh, I'll try to film a couple of things that I've been thinking about how to use them. Anyway, Stan made these, they're made out of 01 tool steel, heat treated, and ground on a surface grinder. And then he uh, used some uh, Birchwood Casey, uh, you know, black in, blackening uh, compound to, to blacken them. So they're very nicely made. Um, and anyway, he sent these to me for testing. I, I love them, and uh, so I'm going to try them out and uh, see how it goes. Now. He also sent me this little screw plate here, and it's a Butterfield, and uh, but it's some oddball sizes here. Uh, uh, they're kind of fractional sizes, one eighth forty. Um, so it's pretty old, is, is what that means. Um, Five thirty two thirty six. Um, what else we got here? Um, Three sixteenths twenty four. Okay, so that's you know equivalent to a ten twenty four, number ten twenty four, and then. Uh, 732.24, so, <laughs> so they're kind of fractional and then the taps to go with it. Um, now, like a, like a frickin' boson, um, I took this out and I was looking at it. Let's see if I can get the damn thing out again. Of course. I took this out and I was playing around with it, right? And it was kind of sticky. So I said, oh, I'll just take it apart and, uh, and clean it a little bit. And uh, I went to take this this particular one out um, to remove the the fixed jaw, and there's the fixed jaw like that. And I went to take this one out, and anyway, I ended up twisting off the little the little left-handed threaded screw on the end of it. So uh, um, anyway, I got the righty tighty, lefty loosey wrong. So now we got a little project to fix this because I can't leave it like this. And uh, so we're going to have to insert a piece in there and thread it and, uh, and kind of rejuvenate that thing a little bit. Cause this thing is it's, it's pristine. It's, it's razor sharp because it hasn't been used, you know. Anyway, uh, so that's going to be a project. We're going to fix that up. Anyway, Stan, thank you very much. And like I said, I'm going to try these out and you'll see them in some of my videos. And uh, uh, we'll try some, uh, some different ways of using those and utilizing those in the shop because it's just a great idea. Okay? So let's move on to the next batch and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff to review. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through some of this stuff pretty quick. A um, lot of it's, you know, just kind of general interest stuff and um, um, things that I kind of look for at the flea market. So here's a um, um, cup and cone here. Um, um, Timken bearing, okay, and uh, I have a project in mind for some bearings like this, so anyway, that was a dollar, okay, nice. And then uh, the same guy had a whole bunch of washers. Now, these are kind of nice because they have a large OD, large OD ID relationship. They're not fender washers, but they're close, so they're about one inch on the uh, 25 millimeters on the outside, 
and uh, they're about 10 millimeter ID here, okay? Um, so they have a close fitting ID, and this is these are for 3 ace bolts, and anyway, uh, that was uh, two bucks for a, a couple of big handfuls in a bag. Uh, steel washers and they're plated, they're nice, so, okay? Um, and then um, I got these wrenches here. Uh, these two sizes are uh, pretty useful. Uh, we got three quarter, uh, and then we have seven eighths. Now what these fit is they fit, the, they're for using on the milling machine. This fits the, uh, the tie down hardware here, okay? And then this fits the, uh, the draw bar on the, um, uh, on the spindle, okay? So a couple of nice sizes, you know, to have around for that. Uh, and these were two bucks each. And they're Bonnie's, which is actually a nice brand. These are, um, these are well-made tools and uh, they're nice. And this has got a little bit of crud on it, but I think that'll come off okay. Okay, and then uh, moving right along. Um, so, you know, today was kind of a banner day. This was flea market stuff here. Um, this is the same thing, but in a double box, which is really nice. You got seven eighths on one side and three quarter on the other. So this is the wrench to leave on your milling machine, okay? Well, guess what? When you see two, get them. Because you don't always see this combination, um, um, you know, seven eighths and three quarters. A lot of times you see uh, 15 sixteenths and seven eighths or three quarter and uh, 11, um, 13 sixteenths, something like that, you know, and um, uh, you don't see these combos. So when you see them, get them. Uh, these are, this is the preferred pattern uh, that way you don't have to have two wrenches on the uh, on the milling machine, you know. You don't have to have two sizes. You got both of them here and they're both box wrenches, which works out good. Anyway, um, five bucks a piece for those. So they're, this one's a Proto and uh, this one's a Thorson, which are kind of name brands, which is nice uh, also. Okay. All right. Next thing up, gigantic uh, um, zip ties. This is one dollar's worth. I don't know, there's one, two, I don't know, eight of them or something like that. And uh, these things are about four feet long. So, uh, um, you know, if you're going to throw some in your, uh, your kit in your car, this is a, probably a good size because you, <laughs> you can hold the bumper on with those if you had to, okay? All right, and then um, uh, just a lifting sling here. I always keep my eye open for these. This is a tough flex, um, and this is one that's, the lifting members are inside this and it's got this protective sheath here. Um, and this one is a uh, eight footer, 5,300 pounds uh, vertical and uh, choker, 4,200 pounds. Basket, 10.6. Basket, 45, 74. Anyway, blah, 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 right? Um, this was five bucks. Five bucks for that. Okay. And then the last thing uh, worth noting uh, from the flea market is this little guy right here, okay? And this is another one of these, uh, these ball mount jobbers here. And this has got a very nice locking ball mount. Now the vise is crap, okay? The vise is just pure shit here. Excuse my, uh, excuse my language there. It's been repaired and brazed and, um, and somebody even brazed it or welded it down to this plate. Well, we're just gonna get rid of that. That's going to go in the trade bucket if somebody wants it. And, um, and then uh, this is what I was more interested in here. This is a very nice one here. Cast iron. Um, can't quite read that. R-E-Y-P. Repo. Repo Corp. Los Angeles. So uh, patent pending. Probably not anymore. Anyway, it's got a nice chrome handle. Um, so this... I really like the one on my welding bench, so uh, um, anyway, I picked this one up. The whole thing was 10 bucks, so that was a nice price there. Okay, all right, so let's move on to the other table. Got more stuff to show. Got to keep going. Okay, so this is the next collect uh, collection of stuff, and this comes from a viewer. Uh, his name is Rick J, and uh, he's kind of local around here. He hits the, uh, the local flea markets out in the valley, and he buys and sells and collects and uh, um, anyway uh, he sent me a nice little letter and uh, he and I have talked a little bit back and forth he had a shaper that he was selling a while back um, anyway uh, he sent me a little uh, little care package here of 
quite the interesting collection of stuff here. So we're going to buzz through this really quick and just kind of touch on some of the highlights here. Um, I guess he bought like a thousand of these or something like that. And uh, he's like, what the heck can we use these for? And uh, uh, I have no idea what they're for. It says Bur Books Machine Special Steel. Um, so my best guess on this is uh, um, mount these to a plate, put them outside, and use them for a uh, to pull your boots off. Uh, um, you know, maybe kick them up at a little angle so you can get your boot heel under there, and then uh, pull your boots off with them. But uh, we'll think about it. We'll see what else uh, we can come up with with that. Um, this is similar, but this is kind of a this is a really nice piece here. It's heat treated. It goes to a fine tip here. Um, so it's like this pickle fork and it's got a good surface to whack on so maybe for separating uh, chucks um, off of uh, arbors he said he's gonna send me another one that way you can double them up too you know you can put them put them back to back right uh, but this one I don't know how that comes through on the sound but it's uh, it's nice and hard and uh, pretty tough anyway it looks looks like he sells them for five bucks a pop uh, but he sent me he sent me one uh, and I, I really like that that's a nice piece so um, anyway just odds and ends a uh, piece of heat treated steel carbide braze boring tool it's got the little sloped angle on it this looks like the bit off of a spade drill here um, and uh, some carbide uh, let's see carbide threading tips that fit who knows what but they got a nice 60 degree angle on them there, so uh, maybe those would end up as threading tools. Uh, one DNMG carbide insert. I don't have a DNMG holder, but maybe we'll get one. Um, some, uh, no, here's, uh, okay, here's a good story right here. So there's, these are extension um, uh, taps, so you can reach into long places and tap it. Now, um, this one, uh, it broke in transit here and there's the piece and uh, of all the sizes to break it's a 632 so it deserved to break um, and uh, um, I'd hate to try to use that and tap a hole without breaking it so uh, this did me a favor by uh, <laughs> breaking on the way over here so that goes that goes away but there's a, there was a pair of them so uh, it's little brothers here and these are brazed into extensions and there's a few of them different sizes um, and some of them are welded uh, it almost looks like stick weld but whoever did it did a pretty good job because when you spin them they're nice and straight I don't know how well you can see that but it did, they don't wobble much and it looks like a damn stick weld to me so that's a that's a pretty impressive stick weld whoever did that um, okay oh this was a kind of a neat piece carbide shank carbide ball uh, burr so uh, that's a that's a pretty sweet tool there so uh, that'll go in the carbide burr anyway thanks thanks for that that's good um, then some step drills of some weird diameters uh, some kind of weird boring tool another piece of carbide with a threading point on it some little end mills and center drills it's, it's just kind of this uh, eclectic collection of stuff, which is kind of cool. Some hooks, you know, who doesn't need a couple of these, right? Those are always cool. Um, and then there's some, some real nice taps here. Now, some of these are helicoil taps. Uh, some of these are helicoil taps. Um, this is a real sweet tap here. I've used these before. These are Greenfield EMSS. These kick butt in stainless, okay? Just absolutely kick butt in stainless. Uh, the way they're relieved and the way they're cut, um, they just work wonderfully. And there's a, a couple of those. Um, and that's what, oh yeah, it was a green field. This is an OSG. Um, this is, so when you bury this one, the chips come out of the hole. They don't go in front of the tap, so that's nice. 3A16. Anyway, there's a few, few pieces like that. These are real, these are kind of handy. I like them. And these all feel nice and sharp. They're pretty, they're pretty happy taps. So, uh, and then there's kind of a special one. Um, and this is the Emug. Emug. Uh, now, the, unfortunately, well, not um, it's a helicoil tap, so it's not quite as useful. But you see how well this is relieved, and it's got this big, heavy shank on it. That's a nice tap. Okay. Um, 
Then uh, let's go here. This is a uh, a bopper, and I don't know if you can hear that, but it's full of lead shot, and it's got a steel face on one side and a plastic face on the other, and it's made by Nupla. I have a couple of their hammers, so we'll uh, we'll give that a little whirl and see how it goes. <laughs> All right, um, and we're getting down to the end here. <coughs> this is a bronze little anvil that somebody cast. And that looks like the uh, the sprue or the riser there uh, when they cast it. And it looks like it got used pretty good. Um, he told me what the story is. He bought a he bought an anvil on, on eBay. And he was waiting for the thing to show up. And um, um, then this thing showed up. And he said, oh, crap, I got hosed here. I got ripped off. And so he called them and they said, no, 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 that's a joke. You can keep it. And... Uh, and then his anvil, his the one that he did order, showed up, showed up the next day or something like that. Anyway, it was kind of a funny joke, but that's a cute little anvil, and uh, that'll go in my little my little uh, small anvil collection. And um, actually, my wife has a small anvil collection. So, anyway, Rick, thank you very much. And there's some, excuse me, some nylon um, um, little discs that might come in handy for washers or something like that. Kind of a neat little collection. I'll. Uh, Spread it around. I'll spread the love and um, um, and use some of this stuff and uh, and see how it goes. And thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so here's one of my first thoughts on these uh, these little clamps from Stan here with the with the hook edge is they can go right on the mini pallet really easily here um, and clamp on in a number of useful ways probably um, to make a 45 degree fence or a 90 degree fence whatever you happen to whatever you happen to want Oop. something like that and then that locks it down now you can put a put a piece against there and clamp that down and mill it so you got a you know immediate 45 degrees and it's a nice stop too um, and then maybe uh, you know you can put an additional uh, stop screw here like so or something like that of course i'm picking a, a crappy hole there um where you have another end stop there and so you can mill something off you know a number of pieces off at 45 degrees or something like that anyway just a couple thoughts there on uh on uh, how those might be used uh, uh on the mill so but that little, that little, okay, so there's a big V block. So if you had a round disc, okay, there's a good one. So we'd clamp this one down like this. And if you had a, uh, a round disc like thing, something this big, that would make a really sweet V block there uh, that's low profile, which is kind of nice that way. So bink, drop those in, da -da 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 -da, put some holes in it, do something like that. Okay, so, uh, and then I had one more idea, and I'll show that in just a sec. Okay, so here's the other thought I had on these, uh, these Shaden um, um, speed triangles here. Um, you know, over on the belt sander, sometimes you want to put a, a really nice 45 on something. So these got a nice thick edge on them, so you can come up against them, and now I can put a 45 that way, and if I flip it over here, I can do a 45 that way, and I contact a different point a different spot on the belt which is nice I mean you're right you can just go that way and then you can go that way but then I'm, I'm really hitting that spot pretty hard oh it's almost the same spot but you know you can move these around a little bit and um, pretty easily and um, and I'm just clamping them to the platen here like so okay Anyway, just another thought and uh, how uh, how you might use those. And uh, if you wanted a good 90, let's see here. Let me get a good 90 out of this. Oh, okay. Um, hey, Mr. Wizard, can we get a 90 out of that? Oh, yeah. Duh. Three. All right, like that. So if we want a good 90, there's a... There's a good 90 right there. Uh, you can probably put it up on this other side there. Um, you know, 
so I'm going to play around with them and uh, and see if I can make use of them and uh, and how they work out. But uh, I just love the way I just love the design elements uh, here. So anyway, okay. So here's the uh, this is the thing I really went to the sale for um, in the advertisement, the vintage tool advertisement on Craigslist. They said. Uh, um, lathe and mill or something like that. And they, in, the, in the text at the bottom, there was no picture of this, but they said uh, um, high-end box and pan break. So I was kind of curious about it, so that's why I really went out there to look at it and then it, there, to see this particular item. And um, um, it ended up being a, uh, you know, kind of a, um, a large uh, a tool sale. Okay, so this is a diacro. Um, it's a radius brake number four, which is kind of like a box and pan brake basically. It has removable fingers, and this has got a full complement of fingers. Um, this is an older style with a cast top here. The newer ones have a welded steel top to them, and then you know it has a leaf. It has a leaf that uh, that folds up to do the bending. Now the, the plate that was on here is not uh, the factory plate, so I'll make a new one and with an angle on it and all that. Um, and I'll need to make a, an, additional, uh, an additional handle here too. Um, let's see. The, uh, oh, the, this is a, uh, what's called a hatchet die here. So uh, what you can do with this is you can make uh, tubular shapes, uh, you know, short lengths of basically tubes. Uh, with that one. Um, what else? Anyway, it's in, it's in pretty good shape and uh, needs a thorough cleaning and lubrication and uh, and I have a, a, a diacro shear, a 24 inch shear. Now this is 24 inches here, 600 millimeters um, and I have a 600 millimeter or 24 inch uh, diacro shear also and then the Rotex punch so I have a pretty good uh, um, you know, kind of light gauge uh, sheet metal uh, um, setup now. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so let's go look at some more stuff. Okay, you boys ready for this? This is going to be pretty good. Um, let's start out with the, the first thing. We're actually using it here. It's one of these uh, um, Electrix uh, magnetic lights uh, was, that came from the, this garage sale. Um, and we're just going to use this, I hope, and not blind everybody out. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's start with the simple stuff. The, uh, there's some ephemera uh, that's kind of neat. Uh, this is a, uh, a Cleveland, uh, let's see if I can find a Cleveland twist drill. It had a cover. Oh, here it is. Ready reference, uh, and it was bound together, but it's got some neat uh, charts on it. Um, cutting speeds for fractional drills, um, different cutting speeds and different drill sizes and then gives you the RPMs. So I'm going to put that up near the, uh, we'll put it over near the drill press and um, which is kind of neat and then they got it for number drills. Uh, drilling uh, speeds and feeds, you know, just kind of uh, general information there. Uh, you know, point information, pretty cool. So it's just kind of one of these handy references. I just like the look of it because it was had cool colors, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hang some of this stuff up on the wall just kind of as uh, shop reference and decoration. So that was first thing. Um, we're gonna have to we'll, we're gonna have to go through this pretty quick. There's a lot of stuff here. This was a just a decimal equivalent chart, an old one here from uh, 1966 um, to 67. And uh, from uh, what is this Huntington uh, rubber mills in uh, in Oregon and oh it comes in Canada too. And then this one has some stuff on the back, some kind of charts and stuff that's kind of cool. Uh, circumferences and areas of circles and uh, factors and you know tank uh, measurements stuff like that. But uh, uh, you can always use another decimal equivalent chart, so I'm going to put that up on the wall somewhere. Um, sorry, no metric on this, guys. Anyway, kind of neat looking. It's it's pretty crispy, but uh, it'll be a, it'll be a good wall hanger. Okay, um, let's do some uh, easy stuff here. So, some a bunch of uh, uh, O1 tool steel. Um, this particular stuff is uh, flat ground uh, material, which makes great parallels or little tools and stuff. 
a um, little pile of that. And I snagged that. Okay, and I went in and into the bucket. Okay. Still here. Um, some big bearings. Whenever I see big bearings, I just nag them. Na nag them. Nab them. Um, some other uh, smaller bearings. Uh, another set of uh, cup and cone uh, Timpkins. Another one of those. And then there's some cutting tools here. And these are just high speed uh, Morse. Um, I forgot what this is. Oh, this is nice. Um, this is a taper pin reamer. And I only have uh, some smaller ones, so this is a larger one. So if you want to put a tapered pin in, uh, this tapers from the tip to back here. Uh, and that's for a certain size pin. This thing's never been used, so brand new. Um, so I didn't have one of those. Um, so it's just a drill, three-quarter inch drill, straight shank, but that'll fit in the, uh, in the big chuck on the, uh, on the lathe, so that's nice. And uh, double end end mill 7 8 brand new. And then here's a real good combination one inch with a 5 8 shank. Um, and I like these because my all my drill chucks, or several of my drill chucks, have a 5 8 shank, so it saves a tool change. So when I take the drill chuck out and I put the end mill in, if I have the same size shank, I double up or I, I save a collet change. Well, doesn't sound like much time, but uh, at the end of the week, you know, that can add up a little bit if, uh, if those are the kinds of things you're thinking about. Okay, so I'm going to change the camera around a little bit and we'll, uh, we'll start looking at some of the next stuff. Okay, so we'll do some of the, the mechanic tools here. So this is, a, this is Proto, but um, it's pretty old because it has this particular logo on it, which is the uh, pre-Proto uh, Plom, P-O-L. P L O M B tools, and that's one of their logos, which was this uh, uh, this woman, uh, scantily clad woman here. So what this is, this is a, a puller set, okay, and um, so it uses uh, the big bar. And look, it still even has the the plum uh, pebble pebble finish measurements. These slip on, and it even has the the springs, which usually get lost to keep things in place. And uh, it's kind of a, whenever I see good quality pullers, I always buy them because, man, when you, when you need one of these, you need it and nothing else will do. Now, this is cool. It has some that are necked uh, to get into, into tighter places, which is kind of nice. And, uh, um, and like I said, it's all, most of these have the springs on them still. Now, I, I haven't figured out how it goes in the case yet because... Uh, <laughs> I'm still working on that and uh, uh, figuring that one out. So uh, maybe I'll have to find a picture. So that's, that's the larger set. And there's another one. Uh, same thing, but the little baby one here. Uh, this one's pretty, pretty cute. Same deal. Um, same kind of puller. This is a good, good configuration. Uh, Two-point pull and, uh, you know, adjustable spread. See, that one needs a spring, right? And... Oh, hey, look at that. It does come out. I didn't think it came out. So those swap out, and then uh, you can put a big one or a little one in there. Huh. Now that looks homemade there. I don't know what the heck that is. And that looks, that's a Unistrut mat. Let's get that out of there. Same with that, and same with that. So uh, this was part of, the, part of the package there, too. So. Okay. All right, and then... Um, so... Forget about the head here, but I, what caught my eye was this handle, the green handle, octagonal grip, so it's a proto. Now this head is not factory. I thought it was uh, when I first picked it up and threw it in my pile, but uh, then I started looking at it and this is kind of a homegrown, uh, uh, homegrown wedge uh, set up here. This is a nylon head here. Feels pretty good, it'll go in the collection. It's uh, nothing special other than the, uh, uh, the handle, actually, but uh, uh, it's a serviceable hammer, okay? Um, okay, so this one, I just grabbed, I, I looked in here and I took a quick look and I went, oh, I see some good stuff in there. So I just grabbed the whole thing and put it in my pile. Um, some of these are snap-on. Some of them, uh, 
have seen better days here. They're pretty hammered. But all you do is give it to the Snap-on guy and they put a new one in there for you. You buy good tools, they take care of you on that stuff. Um, what is that one? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to get drugged down into the details here of the minutia here. Here's another snap on, snap on, snap on, and then probably some protos and uh, yeah, proto. Anyway, good quality tools here. Uh, can't go wrong with that. Another snap on. So we'll get those fixed up and uh, get them into the uh, get them in. Oh, that one's missing its thingamajig. Get rid of that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna change the camera around. So I just wanted I wanted to add a little closing statement onto um, this initial uh, tool review episode here. Um, as you saw, there's a lot of stuff, so I'm I'm, I'm actually blazing through it uh, to show you guys uh, the whole pile. Um, but what I wanted to say was uh, um, I really uh, I don't want to come across like this is a, a tool gloat or look what I got and you didn't get any. Uh, it's, it's not that kind of a situation. Um, what this is about, this is about um, uh, repair and reuse and, uh, and repurposing is what this is, right? Um, so some of these things are broken, they need a little bit of fixing, they need a little TLC, get them going again, and they need somebody to, to use them, okay? And they haven't been used in years, so this is a, a good thing. And uh, the, you know, instead of this stuff going to the scrap dealer and getting melted down or shipped offshore somewhere and melted down and then we buy it back as new, new I-beams for a building or something like that, um, it, it gets put into the hands of, uh, of people that can use it in its current form. And that's what's important. We don't want to spend any more energy than we have to to put this stuff to use, right? So, yeah, it's it's fun and uh, it's it's fun to get a good deal and uh, and see a lot of tools and stuff like that. Um, but there's also a a, a higher order uh, um, cause here, and a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah, I may upgrade some of my things, and then I have extras, and I pass those on, and it might be you, uh, or it might be him over there. So, um, I have a couple of, uh, of young guys that I help out, and uh, that are local here, um, and, uh, you know, I give them excess tools and materials that I have, and, uh, and we, have a, we have a worldwide network now that, uh, that this stuff gets shared uh, with. And uh, so, anyway, I just wanted to say that and just kind of put that out there for you guys to think about. And uh, so, you know, much better that it, uh, it lands in the hands of somebody that might use it than uh, the scrapper who won't use it and, uh, um, and will just expend energy uh, to make money. And uh, this isn't about making money, this is about reuse and repurposing and repair. Uh, and keeping the things that we have and keeping them going. So anyway, I just wanted to say that and uh, um, so uh, we're going to do another episode and uh, we'll look at some more stuff too. So uh, we got a, we got a fair amount left to look at.